Hi guys, welcome to another beer review and uh, I was intending on having, running up to Halloween, a week of like horror Halloween related beers, pumpkin beers, that sort of thing, but uh, as you clearly see, that didn't happen. Um, but I did a, an Oktoberfest sort of week of reviews, well it went on for a little bit longer than a week, so Oktoberfest, pumpkin fall halloween beers they they all can fall under the same category i suppose in some shape or form but uh as you will see i've got a few beers that do sort of like fall into that halloweeny fall festive autumny you know sort of vibe and uh yeah and this is actually a review because i already reviewed this beer but deleted the review which is never a good thing and uh, trying out different lighting and settings it's 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 not looking ideal but at least you can see me and it's not bright orange which would have actually fallen into uh, the sort of Halloween fall sort of period if that's not properly formulated but uh, yeah I love autumn and I love the I just love the atmosphere in the air, do you know what I mean, when it comes around Halloween. Even though I don't rarely celebrate Halloween too much. Um, but I mind you, yeah, we hardly get any trick-or-treaters because, you know, society is just going down the pan. And uh, that's a real shame because as annoying as little children knocking on your door for like three hours asking for free sweets can be, it's a little bit sad that this sort of culture has died down and uh, yeah it's a real shame but uh, I still love like the feeling of Halloween and I always try to do on Halloween day depending on what's going on do like a, a marathon so maybe I'll have recorded a sort of like a vlog for Halloween who knows but anyway we're not here to talk about that we're here to talk about a beer which uh, like i said i don't know have i already said that i think i have since we're nearly three minutes and see i say something i completely forget what i've said and i said and uh, yeah it's one of those days folks but yeah this is a re-review because i have already reviewed it but deleted the video and uh, we're going back over to the witchwood brewery and we're looking at a bottle of their dunkel festa so this is the 2017 uh, batch. Pick this up in Aldi's. Aldi's. Aldi for one pound twenty nine. I'm sure once Halloween's come and gone, it's going to be around the ninety nine p mark. Surprisingly, even though I will be reviewing it um, as part of this little trilogy of Halloween related videos, quite hard to get hold of pumpkin. Um, yeah. Thankfully, I got a review of it recorded because I've really not seen it. Um, and I'm I'm guessing you might see it pop up in Aldi a little bit past its best. But yeah, I was really quite surprised that uh, Pumpkin was not available. Um, it was in my local Morrison's, but they didn't have the biggest stock, which is a real surprise. But anyway, Dunkel Festa. So I'll quickly read you what it says on the back. An exceptionally dark multi beer with an eerie and with an eerie and with an eerie red tinge brewed for those with a fetish for rich flavours. Um, I don't usually have a fetish, but apparently I do now. So hints of coffee and roasted nuts are haunted by an underlying fruity finish, creating the perfect Halloween treat. So this is clocking in at 4.4%, a disturbingly dark beer. Uh, even though I have already reviewed it, I can't really remember what I would class this beer as. But um, the Dunkel aspect of it will always put like an image of a, a German Dunkel beer, Dunkel lager sort of thing. But um, yeah, as is always the case, which would fantastic in the way they present their bottles i mean you've got the etching on the glass and you've got the witch wood in there as well and another fantastic piece of artwork that is the label on the neck as well and i've said this time and time again i rarely like witch wood um 
I know that you shouldn't you shouldn't really because they're part of the big boys and it's Marston's and stuff. But to be honest, I do like a lot of the Marston's owned or brewed beers. Um, I think for a bigger company, they do a pretty upfront job. Um, I know there's been a bit of issue with um, the bottling of Devil's Backbone. Which uh, a lot of people are saying is pale. It's paling in comparison to what it used to be when you used to be able to get it in Weatherspoons on tap. But um, I've never had it um, in bottle form. I only ever had it when it was in Weatherspoons, which I don't think it's in there anymore. Not sure if they've lost the contract or the contract's finished or whatever, but um, it's one that when I see it, I'll definitely pick it up. But yeah, I do like Marston's. And uh, when I'm going to the Lake District, they own quite a few of the pubs there. So, you know, it's a familiar brand for me. Witchwood were probably the brewery that really got me into real ales and craft beer. And uh, yeah, so I've got a lot to owe them. And for the most part, every beer that I've had from them has been top notch, to be honest. Either that or pretty solid. So, beer in the glass then. And that is a lovely dark colour, dark and ruby, slight mahogany tones, in fact I can, no I can't because I don't have proper lighting, uh, yeah one day, one day ladies and gentlemen I will have a proper setup, yeah not jet black by any stretch, it's just like a really dark mahogany and then when you hold it up to the light there might be some ruby hues, a bit hard to see because of where the light is situated, but one thing that's worth of a nice foamy, almost like wet undercooked uh, sponge cake that's what it looks like I mean of course it's a lot more wobbly but uh, yeah nice and tan would that be this review is absolutely atrocious I do apologize but um, yeah lovely lovely rich looking beer so let's see what we get on the aroma big sticky toffee sort of malt character coming out sponge cake it's nice and dense you do get those slight berry like tones coming out that's really all you get in terms of fruitiness but yeah it's big it's cakey treacle toffee pudding that sort of thing very dessert like actually but not too sweet on the aroma And then you get this slight, almost uh, very gentle, smoky element coming out. Beautiful smelling beer. It smells like a cake. It really, really does. So let's see if it tastes like a cake. Cheers. That's really nice. I really, really like that. And you do get that sort of cakiness about it on the flavour. But like I was saying, on the aroma, not too sweet. Thankfully, not overwhelmingly sweet on the palate either. Caramel, molasses, treacle, that sort of thing going on with this one. Lovely earthy hot bitterness on the back end as well, but not too high, not too lingering. It's it's not the highest IBU beer by any stretch, but there's enough bitterness there to cut through what could potentially become a really sweet beer, <coughs> but it's not, which completely goes against that point I've just made. But you know, it's the color of the drinker. We're all experts here. But yeah, it's all about like OT porridgey, slightly uh, warmed up Weetabix sort of flavour to it. Higher end of medium body. It's got like a slight velvetiness to it, almost as if it's potentially had um, like a tiny bit of lactose added to it, which I, I know it hasn't, but yeah, it's nice and bold. It's robust, not overpowering on flavours. So you could have a few of these. And uh, yeah, it's safe to say that on Halloween night when I'm doing a, a marathon of films, 
you know, you get four pack of these, one pound twenty nine times four. You know, you're looking at just over five quid for a very solid, sessionable drinking experience. And um, yeah, it's it's a seasonal beer that I would happily pick up time and time again. Although, if I remember correctly, the last time I had this was maybe last year or the year before. And I remember it being a little bit more sweeter. But thankfully, this isn't too sweet. And to me, it does sort of fall in line with that German Dunkel beer. Where you get that roastiness, you get that slight nuttiness, but you also get a nice cakey sweetness to it. But the body's not too heavy, but bold enough so you can session it and have a good flavoursome beer experience. Is it going to set the world on fire? Is it going to blow your mind? Probably not. But is it one that I'd happily drink again? Hell yeah. Um, I like what Witch would do with their seasonal beers. Um, and I like what they do in general. And this is another high quality beer from those guys. And uh, yeah, it's safe to say I'll be picking this one up again over the next couple of weeks. Especially when it potentially gets to the you know the 99p yeah, for 129 you're getting a a lovely beer for that but when it's on a you know, little bit of an offer sign me up for even more yeah like oatmeal cookies almost as well i could go on and on i, I really really could for the people who think that breweries like witchwood produce dull boring flat beers Give a go of this and um, you'll be very pleasantly surprised. And uh, yeah, which would still do beers of character, I find. And this is another another nice one. And the more I drink it, the more that bitterness is building up slightly. Almost like a slightly singed sponge cake. Maybe. Yeah, that's, that's a lovely, lovely beer. I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10. You, you really can't fault it too much. Um, what would I give it? What would I want for it to be a 10 out of 10? Uh, that's a weird thing, isn't it, about beer reviewing? You try and be as. Um, you try and offer your opinions and thoughts and constructive criticism and ideas of how beers can be better, but although not a perfect beer, I think you could do much worse with this one. And um, I'm not sure if they play around with the recipe from batch to batch, but as it is now, it, it's a lovely autumnal beer as the nights are getting shorter, it's getting a little bit colder. It's got that sense of comfort and warming to it without actually having a warming sensation because of the ABV. And yeah, I'd imagine this on something like Cask would be absolutely fantastic. That would probably uh, give it a 10 out of 10 if it was just a... I don't know, maybe if it, the beer was a little bit more creamier, almost. And maybe did have something like lactose put into it, or... Do they put oats in this? Yeah, they, they put oats in it. If they were a little bit more bold with the oats, I think to add a little bit more body to the beer, then it would be a 10 out of 10. Yeah, I'm going to leave it at that. I'm going to... My beer expertise, and... Uh, what beer expertise? I'm just a guy who likes to drink good beer and show his folks' opinions online. You know, I'm not going to be hosting any tasting events anytime soon, am I? Let's be honest. But uh, yeah, if you've tried this one, as always, let me know your thoughts' opinions. Are you a fan of Witchwood? Are you a fan of Marston's? No matter what your opinion, I'll never censor anyone or attack anyone for what they believe in, especially when it comes to beer. So, yeah, don't be afraid to post an opinion that might be unpopular because you might get idiot replies in the comments from some people, but I fully respect people who actually voice their opinions and concerns about any sort of topic. Why are we even talking about this? It's beer. Let's stop politicising beer. Let's just enjoy beer. Let's talk about beer. Let's have fun. Let's enjoy this hobby. Let's, you know, bask in... The world that is the, uh, the the world of brewing, you know. Let's just stop taking this stupidly seriously. If you're not in the industry, you shouldn't really take this too seriously anyway. Anyway, that's my uh, Jerry's final thought for the day. 
Check out my Witchwood playlist. Check out Witchwood. Of course, if any of my friends and fellow YouTubers have reviewed this one, then uh, their reviews are down below. And uh, yeah, more importantly, give me your thoughts, opinions, and uh, any recommendations for any beers that sound like this one. Anyway, another 15 minute review. <sighs> See you guys later.